You know, I'm his favorite. <laughs> I will not deny that. I will never deny that because I am. Because that's what I walk in. That's why I walk. I'm really not. I'm going to get through this, okay, without. I'm a crier. I'm not a screamer and yeller. I'm a crier. But, you know, this morning I was downstairs and <laughs> I was ironing. I'm domesticated. I was done ironing, and there's this awesome thing. It's called Pandora. We have, we, I play on through, our, it's through the TV, and there's some things I know, and that's enough. <laughs> and, uh, and I was down there, and the song came on. I'm down there trying to iron. <laughs> I said, God, you just do this, don't you? You just have to do this. You know, and he said, Rick, I just love you so much. You know, I love you, and I want everybody else to know how much I love them. And this is, you know, this is the thing I want you to portray that people will grasp onto and get a hold of because in this, in this world and what we're doing, if we don't have that, you know, even Paul said that, if I don't have love, I can sure have a lot of things. I can speak in tongues. I can have gifts. I can prophesy. But that's only in part if I don't have the love of God in me to portray that. Those things that he has given me, the gifts that he has put into me, if I don't have that love, I have nothing. I have nothing. So those things are nice. They're, they're nice, but without that, yeah, I have nothing. And as that song came on, I said, Lord, you know, I said, <laughs> and he said, uh, just, just go with it. And so this morning, yo, and as I was sitting here, and I'm in praise and worship, and he says, just let me prove something to you. And and the main words of that song were, his love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. And when they started that, I thought, you can't do this to me right now. But Rick, I'm your, you're my favorite. I just want you to know. And I want you to grasp onto this, of who God is. And this is, it's called the passion of God. Because we have the passion of our own hearts, of the things that we do in sports and, and whatever it is that we have a passion for. You know, we, call, we talk about that passion. We talk about, you know, the professionals and the passion that they have. And, and you know, and, and we can even talk about the different preachers and speakers and teachers and the passion that they have. You know, and, and then, the, you know, we always, of course, the important one in that, you know, was, I've seen is, of course, there's the movie. It's called The Passion of Christ. You know, and he said, Rick, I want you to talk about my passion. You know, and it was like, but God, how do I speak about your passion? He said, because it's in you. Just bring it out. You know, so I, I got excited. Okay, I'm going to look up passion, and we're going to do passion. We're going to show your passion, Lord. And I looked it up, and it was in one place in the Bible. And it's in Acts 1 and 3, and it talks about, it says, after the passion of Christ, he showed himself for 40 days. I'm like, that's it. He said, well, look it up. I said, okay, I'm going to look passion up. Passion, it says certain tenses, and tenses for it. It's an experience and a sensation or impression. Yeah, God, to feel passion to be usually painful. <laughs> okay, is there another one? Something undergone, an emotion or influence, hardship or pain. God, yeah, I'm going to give this to them. Let's have God's passion in us for pain. And he said, but Rick, when you have passion for something, yeah, there's pain. But it's a good pain. It's a joyful pain. It's a pain that comes because you want it so bad. You want to see things come to fruition. You want to see things grow. You want to see joy in other people's lives. You know, and, 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 you know, and I can even talk from my profession, whatever profession you have. You know, after doing this, I thought, my God, I've got a passion for my job. The way I talk about, do I have to go today? You know, he says, this is where the passion comes in. This is the pain. Because you're going to have somebody who's going to smile because they have heating or cooling. You know, and, okay, I have passion. I have passion. And so I put, you know, and it, it says, his passion and love for us to create 
for us, for him, and I, was, I wanted to, I was, going to read a, I was going to read a whole chapter of Genesis 1, chapter 1. And, but you need to read it, but you need to read it from the Father's eyes. And this is the thing we need to grasp on today, is, is, is we've got to see things through His eyes. And if we would read this word through His eyes, if we would grasp on to, through Him, to us, and that same thing, that feeling He has for us, in us, is the same thing He says you have in you to pour out to others. And so, you know, when you read in Genesis, of course it talks about, you know, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. You know, on the earth it was without form, it was black, it was void. And it says, and then the Spirit moved upon the waters. And it said, and the darkness and light were separated. You know, and you go on through the days as he separated, you know, he said it, uh, separated the waters. You know, there was a heaven, you know, a heaven, a firmament and the, from the earth. And then he also separated the waters from the earth on the, on the earth. <clears throat> and we can read that and go, oh, wow, God, that's neat what you did. You're a creator. And he's going, no, 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 no. You've got to grasp onto the fact that what, everything I did was for you. Everything I did was for you. That's why I'm his favorite. He did this for me. And by the end of this, by the time we can leave today, I am praying you walk out of this door go saying the same thing. I'm his favorite. Grasp that and walk, walk with me today, <clears throat> being his favorite. And so he did that. He separated the earth. And, and, you know, I could go here and get him exactly, but you know the gist. He created the fish in the sea of all certain types. He didn't just make one and say, boy, yo, that's good. No, I'm going to make ones that they're going to be discovering for their whole life because I want them to be excited. I want them to be like a child in a playground, finding that stick in the dirt. Yes, a treasure. You know, and, and that's what he was thinking of when he did this. He created that. He created every fish of all kinds of sorts. You know, ones that we could eat, ones that we don't want to eat, but ones that we want to look at, colors. You know, and, and then he did the same thing with animals. He created so many animals and insects and birds and the fowl, the air, you know, and, and created all this. And he said, and, and, and I know, it says, it says in the Word, too, he knew me in my mother's womb before that. In the beginning, he knew me. So I've got proof. I'm his favorite. And that's so that passion for me. That passion for me, he cr kept creating. Okay, so now these are things Rick's, Rick's going to enjoy. He likes fishing. He likes hunting. He likes just sitting and watching the deer and the turkey around his house. You know, he likes doing these things. And I love the joy in his heart. I love the thoughts that he has towards me when he sees these things. And, and he says, and, that, <clears throat> and so as he did that, then he said, I made every herb, every plant, every fruit that you could imagine that you could eat to sustain you. And he could have stopped and said, okay, if I just stay here, I'm not going to have any problems. Things are good. I've got animals. I got birds. I got seeds. Every, you know, and they all, they all follow me. They obey me. You know, they don't question me. They just do what they're supposed to do. But understand, he finished it off by making. He says, and then he goes, now, now that I've got all this, I've got the perfect playground, the slides. You know, the ones you see nowadays with, you know, all the all the stuff they have nowadays. Now I'm going to bring my kids in, and I'm going to see their face. When I create them, he says, let's make man in our image. You know, and, and man and woman, and, we, and they made man and woman in their image. <clears throat> and he said, now, enjoy. Enjoy this. Have fun. Rejoice. Love this, because I love you. I have a passion for you, and that same passion you're going to understand from me because it's that passion because, you see, even though he did all this, here comes that pain part. He knew. When he put us on this earth, he knew. He knew it was going to happen, so he already had a plan. Even while he was creating all this, think about it. He already had a plan. 
Don't tell me there's any part in your life that you were not dark and void like this earth was in the beginning. <clears throat> Don't tell me it didn't take but the Spirit to hover across you and split the light and darkness. Don't tell me that hasn't happened in your life. Don't tell me you didn't have a plan for it, all this to happen. It all began from back here. It was all back here. Every bit of it was already planned and done. Redemption was already set in place because he loves us, because he has a passion for us. He has a passion for us, a family, to be with him, to love him. And so even when I, you know, it, it split that and it said, and he said, let there be light. There's that day, there was that day in our lives when that light came in. That light came in. And so his passion and his love for us to create a dwelling place for us. His passion and love for us to have a redemption plan already in place. His passion and love to crucify his only son to bring us back to point A, the garden. Back to him. Back to that love. In Galatians 5, 22 through 25, I'm going to go here and there's, I'm just keep, kind of, I'm going to keep tying and, 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 and sewing together. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, love, song, love suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. This fruit will take passion to fulfill. Because even though they all sound good, yeah, long suffering, okay, you know, it's going to take pain. See where that passion comes in? That's where that passion comes in. And now I'm talking about the passion of God in us towards others. Sometimes it's not going to be a joyful experience to love, to be gentle. Long-suffering already speaks for itself. But it's going to take that passion. And so we are the fruit of his passion, which makes us passion fruit. Makes us passion fruit. We're the fruit of his creation. We are the fruit of this passion. And so we go forth into this world doing these things, being the fruit of the Spirit, being that fruit that shares love, that shares joy, that shares peace, long-suffering, and gentleness, goodness, showing that faith that we could pour out into others what he created for us. We can, we can create also. His Spirit lives in us. We could create a path, a door that people can open to Christ in lives. 23, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There's no regulations against these. No regulations. Regulations are borders. Regulations are those things that hold things, you know, that, oh, can't go outside of this. He says there's no law against this. There is nothing, there is nothing that can stop this from planting seed, from putting seed into people's lives. See, that's where you know, we drive forward with that passion of God in us to, to speak in other people's lives, speak into their lives, speak into their lives, and know that there is no regulations to that, that it's, it's him. It's him. It's his spirit speaking to the dark and the void. It's his spirit speaking to separate, to make a break in there, to bring some light in to those that we are, are around. This thing is driving me nuts. No regulations or boundaries. No laws against these words, these things that we share with others. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and love, lust. Crucify means to subdue and extinguish. The flesh is selfishness. Against that, there is a law. So if we're trying to do this in the flesh, we're trying to do this on our own, there is a law against that. You know, his word, he even says that he, now you say, he has, I have no respect. I'm not a respecter of man. He showed me something through that. He said, you know, I don't respect the flesh. Because there's a law against that. What I respect is the Spirit. That's why he says to walk in the Spirit, to, to worship in the Spirit, to love others in the Spirit. There's no law against that. See, we're free in him there. 
He respects that. He, he enjoys that because that's him. That's him. That's his passion. That's his love going through us to others, to plant, to grow. So and that's why it goes on and says, and so if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in it. If we're going to live in it, walk in it. You know, and know that anything you try and do out of the flesh, there's a law against that, that that has boundaries, that it can only do so much. That the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit is the passion of God through us that it's going to speak to others. That's going to bring a separation and a joy and a love in them. And I want to talk a little bit about that passion because, you know, we talk about the passion of Christ. Where do you think he got the passion? What did he say? I do nothing apart from my Father. I, I hear him. I see him. I only do what my Father says to do. And so... It had to be passion from God in Jesus that sent him to that cross. It was the passion that put him up there. It wasn't, it wasn't for anything else, but the passion for us. Again, his passion. I know you say he, he keeps saying that word, but I hope when you walk out of here, that's the word you're saying. God has passion for me. It makes me his favorite. And so that passion held Christ to the cross held him there, and God, God, even though he couldn't face it, knew what was happening. And that's why Jesus, in those words, says, I look, I look to the joy. <laughs> I look to the joy on the other side. I look to the joy. I look to what's going to bring lives, what's going to bring us back to the people, back to God. And so we, we go forward into that. And so that same passion came from his father, and in John 14, 19 through 10, and the same thing that he said there to Philip. Because Philip said, show us the Father. Show us the Father. We want to see the Father. He says, haven't I been with you long enough? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You've seen everything. Because what he is, I am. And we can go through this world with that same passion and spirit of Christ in us, saying the same thing to, you know, and, and speaking those words to people of life, because that same word that spoke life is in us. It's in, our, it's in us. It's in our belly. It's in our heart. But you know, those words, if they aren't with the passion and knowing how much He loves us, how can we speak that same passion to others? You see, there's a foundation that we have to have. And that's why Paul said that. If I don't have that, everything I do is for naught. It's for naught. There's a, you know, I'm a, I love music songs. You know, and there's a song, <clears throat> and it's neat, they kind of came out with a second version of it that they actually speak verse, the, that verse in the middle of it now. It says, let my life be the proof of your love. You know, and as I, you know, and as they speak that in there, that's what they speak, is that if I had this, and then at the end he says, but if I don't have your love, I'm bankrupt. I'm bankrupt. I have nothing. Nothing, 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 Lord. So, Lord, let, let my life be the proof of your love. And this is, this is the way he, he does this to me every time on these things. He said, no, Rick, let my love be the proof of your life. Let it be the proof of your life, my love. Let it be the proof of your life that because you are here on this earth, because there's so many times I was supposed to have died. I really should. I should have. He was so gracious to show me. All the, you know, he showed me all the ones. You know, he gave me remembrance of, of things in my life prior B.C., Christ. You know, he showed me things where I should have been dead. Guns in my face, you know, riding my bike and not remembering how I got home and stuff like that, you know, and just those that, that I remembered. He said, Rick, those are the ones you remember. <laughs> and I could see him smiling because because he knows in our lives there's so much we have to give. 
There's so many others that need us to live and live with his passion, to live with that, to give to others, to show them his passion so it comes in. You know, that's what gives us a grounding root. That's what gives us roots that go deep. That's the ones that gives us the roots that, like the oak tree by the water, goes real deep. So the nutrients are down there, so no matter what comes against you, it's not going to break you. You know, after this week, there's a lot of broken things out there. I saw, you know, trees, semis. You know, I mean, all kinds of things that were uprooted, taken off of what they ride on. And if we're not deep, we're going to get that same windstorm in our life, and we're going to find ourselves laying on our side, saying, what happened? Really? You know, maybe that wind, if your roots are deep, that wind might get you bent so far over you think you should be down. But when the wind quits, guess what? There you are, back up again going, all right, here we go. <laughs> you know? I just went against gravity. <laughs> it's my father having fun, enjoying, because he knows that that passion is in us. He knows we can go through anything. And that's why Paul could speak the way he did. And all this, have joy. You know, all his beatings. You know, he was dead, got back up again. You know, all the things that he went through, counted all his joy. And you think, how? Well, it wasn't until he grasped onto when, you know, when he said, to, you know, kept praying, God, take this thorn away from me. By grace enough? Point well taken. That was the passion that he just needed. That was the passion he needed. I said, you know what? No, <laughs> it is sufficient. That's what's sufficient. That's what's going to carry me. Not things being perfect in my life. Not every little ache and pain being gone is going to make everything good for me. It's that passion of God in me to pour out onto others, to give life to others. That, that what is sustaining. That is what pours out and is enough. That's enough. That's enough. The other things, he says, first seek ye the kingdom. All these other things are just accessories, fun. But this, there's nothing more joy than seeing someone's eyes light up with the revelation. I'm not a bad person. I'm not so much dirt that nobody can accept me. There is no Nothing that can replace that moment. And so believest thou not that I am in the Father, this is verse 10, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, and when he finishes it, he does the work. He does the work. And when we're walking in the flesh, we're in the law, who's doing the work? We are doing the work. How did Jesus walk? He walked because he walked the Father was doing the work. He did it all. Jesus just listened and did what he was told and, and did as he saw and walked in that spirit. And it was that passion that kept him going, kept him, how many times? That the things that he saw, the times they tried to kill him. Just think if he walked within the law of the flesh, he would have gave up a long time ago. But that passion was the only thing that kept him going. It was a passion that kept him going to see it past, past my pain, <clears throat> past those things that are going to hurt my feelings, past those things that might not make me look perfect in somebody's eyes. That's the pain of passion because it's hurting the flesh. So do we see ourselves as God sees us? Do you? You can ask yourself that right now. Don't tell me. It's your relationship with God. Do you see yourself as God sees you? Do you? Have you taken the time to read? Just, just read chapter 1 of Genesis. And, and, and just envision him in, in all his joy and his laughter and his love for us as he was creating everything. And he does that every day. He does that every day with us. Deuteronomy 32, 9 through 12. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot 
of his inheritance. A portion is one's possession. It is chosen. So we are a possession and we are chosen. A lot means a measuring cord, measured, a measured portion. So we are his possession, we are his chosen, we are his example to the world. His measure to this world. This is what the world looks at. How many times do you hear every day? Well, this is the way the world sees the Christian, the church. We are his measure to this world. Are we showing that passion of God to this world? Because if we show the passion of God to this world, what else can the world say? What can they do? What are they going to fight against? What can they bring laws against? They can't. They can try and make laws, but those laws do not, they don't come against these things. That's what's so awesome about them. Because they don't come against him. They don't come against his spirit. His spirit will still work. The words will still work. The passion works. So we are an extension of him, of himself through us to this world. He found him, this is why I love this one. You know, there's five, uh, let me finish this one. He found him in a desert land in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. And if you know, if you know anything about me, have, been, have shared with me or anything, you, you know. I love being the apple of his eye. You know, it's in five places in the Bible, in mine. And different ways it talks about, it actually, it, you know, there's David, of course. It's in Zechariah. It talks about his people being the apple of his eye. There's an, in Zechariah is where it talks about, it says, don't you, basically paraphrasing, it says, don't you dare touch the apple of my eye. These are my people. Don't you dare touch them. But I like this one because it says he found them in a desert land. This is God's passion. And it says he kept him. He kept him to guard in a good sense. It says to obey, to conceal, to besieged, hidden, to keep, a monument, to observe, to watch. Is it like a brooding father or, or a brooding mother? You know, just, you know, overtop you. Watching, paying attention, keeping you going, driving you forward, putting more passion, you know, when you stumble, get up. Keep going. I love you. I'm going to take you through this. I'm going to take you through that. You know, even in the howling wilderness, I've been in a howling wilderness. People crying out. You know, those times are coming. This is why this is so important. Those times are coming. When, when you know, you see, sometimes you see the places where people, you know, you see this here and there, and, but it's going to be, there's going to be mass crowds of people howling and crying out for a light, for something that will change their lives, to get them out of the situation that they're in. <clears throat> so they kept him. The apple of his eye means, it says a hollow out, something hollowed, the pupil or the gate of the eye. It's the middle or the center of the eye. And so when you take that, it's a, you know, take that and you say that that passion, we are his passion, we are in the middle of the gate of his eyes as he looks at us. And so that passion is there. And if any of us have been children, and then we have been parents, or our parents, we know when that child does something wrong, passion pours out of our eyes. And the children will look at us and go, I'm so much in trouble. Just by that look that we give, because a passion pours from our eyes. It, pa it pours and when we show that love to them, that same passion of love pours from our eyes. It does. You look at them with a love, they know it. You look at them with discernment, they know it. You look at them like, you are going to get the belt now. They know it. That's passion. And when he says, you're the apple of my eye, you're the passion of my eyes. And I search to and fro with passion, looking for those who want to love, those who want to give, those who want to be obedient to me, to love me, to give back to this world, to and fro with these eyes of passion. You're the apple of his eye. You're the center of his passion. And it's okay to feel that way. It really is. You're not being selfish at all. 
Remember last week when he shared out of Philippians, be ye of this mind. Be ye of this mind, be of this mind. So in 11, here's that, here's that brooding mother. As an eagle stirs up her nest, flutters up her young, spreads abroad her wings and takes them and bears them on her wings. Isn't that a picture? A picture of passion, of love for us? That we are not, you know, we are, we, we're not walking this walk alone. That in everything, he has his hands upon it. If we just let him keep his hands upon it. You know, that's the, that's the other thing about him. He gives us a will. We could take it back out of his hands if we want. Surrounded by the law. Leave it in his hands. There's no law against that. How do you want to walk? How do you want to approach people? You want to approach people with no law? You want to pro- approach people with that freedom, that passion of God to pour out into them? So the Lord, Lord alone led him. And there was no strange God with him. He made him to ride on high places in the earth and that he, might, that he might eat the increase of the fields. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. This is a God that will take care of us no matter what in the howling places. A God that has passion. If you're a, you know, I, and that's why I want to keep going back to a parent too and you that someday will be parents. You'll find out. What passion for a child is like. You know, and, and, and he says that even the father of this earth doesn't love like he does. Father gives gifts, still doesn't love like he does. Still does not care for us like he does. Does not go to the places that we go to. In our mind, we don't have to be there physically. We, go, we can go there in our mind. And beat ourselves up. You know, it says when it says you can be in the highest places, you could be under rocks, you could be in caves. We can be there in our mind. We don't have to go there physically to be there. We could be there in our minds, in those places. And he says, I'm there with you. Because that's not where I've called you to be. That's not where I've called you to stay. I've called you to walk with my passion in this world. To love. To have joy. Jude 20. Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. How do we stay there? You know, I know you're telling me about his passion for me. How do you stay there? Building. Building. What did he say? Was it, was it, was it the, to Peter when he said, stir yourself up? <laughs> Stir yourself up. Don't, don't wait for that exciting time or going from place to place to try and find that next fix. Your fix is right at home. When I came up from downstairs this morning at that song, I said, honey, I just got hammered. You know, and tears pouring out of my eyes. I said, Rick, that's a phrase we use. We got drunk. Yes. Drunk in the spirit. Loving every minute of it. Enjoying it. And even in those places, he's saying, you can be like that. That's, that's there. Do you think because your mind goes there that I step outside and go, okay, I'll wait for you to come back out. And while we're in there, as long as we say, God, I need you right now. He's that, he's that mother fluttering. Come on, I'll take you on my wings. I know you ain't got the strength right now, but I'm going to take you on my wings and we're going to go. We're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy this, this flight. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some having compassion, here's our part. And some having compassion, making a difference. Having compassion means to be active. Active in that passion that he has placed in us. Active in that passion. Active in being like Christ. He abides in us. We abide in him. We are of the branch. We're on there. We've been grafted in. He's given us life to live that life and do the same thing he did as he walked this earth. He said, greater things will you do. Greater things. How? Only by the passion can we do that. That's the only way that we hold on to that. We bring it in. And we walk. We walk. We get up. Thank you, God. Thank you. I get to get up today and go to work with passion. 
I get to go school, teach kids with passion. Whatever it is that you're doing, say that. Say it. Keep it. Because he says right in that beginning, build yourselves up in the Holy Spirit. He's saying you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to have that passion just to do this every day. Because your flesh is going to fight you to the end. And so he says, get up, renew every day, subdue, crucify the old man every day. Yeah, when we come to the Lord, there's that, there's that initial start, but every day we've got to crucify, crucify every day, subdue, extinguish the old man from raising his head and saying, uh-uh, I'm enjoying my day because I'm walking in the passion of God, not in the passion of myself. You know, I might have emotions and things that get me, you know, but, you know, that passion of the Spirit inside of us, sometimes we just don't know what to do with it, sometimes. You know, that's when we get that way. But it's fun, and it's enjoyable. Especially when you're by yourself. What is a commercial? You know, they all have that superstition. And like it says, if it works, it's not stupid. <laughs> you know? Or it doesn't look weird. <laughs> you know? It's like, you know, with the passion of God in you, that don't matter. Even if you look weird, it don't matter. It doesn't. Because it's him and not you. you know, see, that's where that law, that regulations don't have nothing on you. Because there's no boundaries. I can be weird in the spirit and it's all right. As long as it ain't outside, you know, weird weirdness. Okay? <laughs> if you're grasping on here. <laughs> And so making a difference, we have compassion. Some have compassion. Making a difference. Making a difference means to contend. Isn't that awesome? Come on. I have a passion of God in me that wants to, that has a compassion, that, that wants to, to go out and contend for the lives and spirits of other people. To contend. That means fighting. That means if you don't have passion, you ain't going to get through it because, yeah, there's going to be pain in it. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's awesome. It's, it, it's, it's making a difference. And others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. This is so, this is, contend. You're pulling them out of the fire. Like I said, there's nothing like the look of the eyes when you're pulling somebody out of the fire. And they know it too. And they know that there's been a change. Something has happened. Something has happened. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. There's a garment that comes with contending for those people. Pulling them out of the fire to get a garment. And hating even that there might be a tad bit of the law on them. Brush it off. That there is no spot or blemish on that garment because he clothes us and raises us up above this earth, this flesh, brings us to a place where we can actually walk in this and it not be a far thing, far reaching, or yeah, that was for this guy or that person or whatever. No, it's for all of us. We're his favorite. We are his favorite. We are the apple of his eye. Every day I wake up in, in his passion because he's looking at me with love and joy. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. wonder who that, that would be him. And to present, present you faultless before the, the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. To present us faultless. To bring us up. To bring us out. And the only way that's going to happen is if we let his passion, his love, the way he sees us, come in. Because we can't do it without that. Paul couldn't do it. Peter couldn't do it. That's what happened to them when they were, Peter, you, we all know Peter. He was a go-getter. I'll cut ears. I'll cut ears for you. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll blabber out, yes, I'll never go. I'll be by your side forever. 
He had, he had passion, but that passion had laws. It had a regulation around it. It was his. It wasn't God's. And when he spoke to him and said, Peter, do you love me? And on that third time, passion of God hit him. And he said, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it's not about me now. It's all about you. And it's about how much you love me that you would trust me to feed your sheep. When you said, feed my sheep. You know, that was the understanding. His love never gives up. It never fails. Never runs out on us. Never. Because he has a passion and a love for us that just is unending. His mercies are new every day. He waits in anticipation for us to get up in the morning. Can just grasp on to that. We sleep, he doesn't. And so every day, every night, you know, we go to bed and he says, okay, you need rest. Yeah, I know, because you're still dragging around that flesh, that body, and it needs rest. But he's like, I can't wait for the morning. I just can't wait for the morning. You know? And there's times he does it. He wakes us up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want to talk to you. Really? Yes, now. Okay. And off you go. Really? Have you had that experience? I know you have. You've had to have that. I just couldn't wait till the morning. I know the alarm's set for five. But I'm up. <laughs> all night. 24 hours. All the time. I'm up. Get used to it. You're coming here. That's the way it's going to be. You know? Get used to it. Get that passion. Get that passion. Come on, get up. You're my favorite. Get up. My gosh. How many did see? <laughs> Me, the Holy Ghost, Jesus. You know, it's like that first time, again, back in Genesis. Let's make man in our image. Could you imagine the joy that he had? Could you imagine the, having a joy to make something you know that was going to fall? Fail? Fall apart? Could you have joy for that? With the passion to know that beyond, with the, on the potter's hands, he could take anything broken and put it back together and make it so much better. Put a new wineskin around an old one. You know, take that old one and throw it away and give you a new one. You're new. That's what his excitement and love are for. That's what our excitement and our love from him need to be too for these people of this world. Not to look at him and say, oh, what a bum, he's dirty. Or, oh, look at that mouth or this or that or whatever else. The things that we see, we don't even see what's in the spirit. Take, we take the time and let God speak and say, you know what? What you're looking at is of the law. But the thing that's inside, that's what I want because I can free that. I can get the boundaries you know, off that 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 person can have a real life. That that person could take those other things and, and toss them when he decides to or she decides to and find out that I'm somebody. I don't have to live this way. I am a child of God too. Zephaniah 3.17, we all know this. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over you with joy. Get a picture that's all, you know, really get a picture of God the Father rejoicing over you, over you, not your accomplishments, not that I did something today that was right, finally, or, you know, that you did speak to somebody's life, and they, and they did receive God. That's, that don't stop there. It's like, that's not your accomplishment. Your accomplishment is to keep going, doing that more. More and more and more. And the rejoicing. And then next thing you know, you're with the angels rejoicing. And the next thing you know, you're like Jesus because it said he was beside himself. <laughs> That's in the word. And you know what beside himself means? He was acting kind of funny. He was dancing and just having a blast. Uh-huh, yeah. That's rejoicing. That's having passion. That's having the regulations not gone. They're gone. 
He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. He sings, he dances over me. And if you don't walk out that door saying the same thing, ask somebody. Grasp on to somebody here that wants to live like that, that wants to have that God in them, that wants to have that passion pouring out because you know what? The next thing you know, that person you've seen on the street that before you kind of, you're going to, all of a sudden this passion is going to come through your eyes and you're going to walk up to them and you're going to speak into their life changing words, changing things that are going to happen to them. And then the passion spreads. That is a precursor to heaven. We can, we can be one-dimensional of how we can have passion in our life. We can be one-dimensional with that because that's the way we've seen passion as one dimension. God takes the lid off of it, takes the sides off of it. There's no box around passion with God. It just pours. We must first know how he loves us with a passion, then emulate that same love and passion to others. And uh, <laughs> I'll be finishing if my eyes will clear up enough to read. Psalms 139, if you know this, sit and read this over and over until you get that picture Stop changing so many pages. Lord, thou hast searched me and you know me. For most of us, we'd think that would disqualify us right now. You know me. <laughs> he says, Yeah, I do. <laughs> See how that changes things? We take it from our dimension to his. From our dimension of, You know what I've done and what I did. I know. God, I love you. You're awesome. You're the apple of my eye. I created everything here for you to have fun and to have joy and to show me to others. Then you change that and say, okay, you do know me. I hate this. Honey, you want to, <laughs> oh, you want to read this? I'm not going to give in to it. It's my eyesight. <laughs> <clears throat> Tears. Start reading. You know. Yes. Do you want this? Or you have to use a preacher's voice? Oh, no. okay. Thank you, Mike. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. He knows everything. It's 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 in the, it's it's out there. He knows. My thoughts, he knows my uprisings, he knows the things that he knows. He knows, he knows, he knows, and he loves me. He loves me, he sees me this way. See, get past that. That's what I'm saying. Read this. He already knows all this, but yet his passion, his passion. Thou compasseth my heart, my path, my lying down, and thou art acquainted with all my ways. For thou, not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind me and before, and laid thy hand upon me. <coughs> Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I, shall I thee from right thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and even the night shall light about me, yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but from the night shineth as a day, and the darkness and the light are both alike unto thee for thou hast possessed my reins 
Thou hast covered me in thy mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that thy soul knoweth right well. You covered me in my mother's womb. You're covered. He knows all the things, where you go, things to do. He's there. He's there. Still loving, still passion, still saying, you're mine. You're the greatest thing. You are the greatest thing that I have created. You are the greatest thing that I have created. Why do you think we're not all exactly the same? Because we are the greatest thing that he has created. And with who I am, I'm his favorite. And with who you are, you're his favorite. You're the favorite one he made, just like you. The favorite one, just like you. There's no other like you. We're like snowflakes. Not one alike, and millions and millions come down, and not one is the same. But yet, everyone has such a beauty to them. Everyone has such a a detail and, and just made. I made this one. Can you imagine making all those snowflakes like that different? Well, that's what he did with us. Every one of us from creation. Not the same. Perfect. Perfect. With his passion in us. Read that psalm. The whole thing, that was just part of it. It gets better. Read it. Get the picture of God waiting for you in the morning. When you get up, I, I, I get up. So there's times I get up, I just start smiling <laughs> because of the picture that he has. He's, he's given me. and I love it. It's great. I could walk my day like that. Don't think I walk a perfect life. Believe me, I get grumpy. <laughs> I do. But, but then I could get back to God looking at me <laughs> in his face and that smile. You know, he's stern, yes. Stern on the fact that he wants us to be with him and everyone else. But he loves us and he has fun with us. Father, I'm going to thank you right now. Lord, seed that got poured this morning into our hearts and our minds, Father, changing that dimension of how we see things, how we see you, how we see you see us. See, we're cha- we change that dimension. That's why you said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, your th- you know, my ways are not your ways. It's time we start thinking like you. That's what having the Spirit in us, that's why having the Spirit and the, the teacher guiding us, teaching us all things. And that's teaching us about you and your love for us, your passion that pours out in us right from the beginning until eternity. It don't end. Unending. Unchanging. Always there. All the time. Joying over us. Fussing over us. Loving on us. Smiling. God, being in those places when we're hurting for others, when we're, we're, that passion is pouring out, that we have the affection and, yeah, that, that, that extension of your arm of, and, that, and then that pain, and that's what you, that's where your strength in us, in our weakness, that's your strength in us that makes us strong in those times that we can drive forward. And that's why it's so confusing to this world that they cannot understand how do we drive forward. We're supposed to be back here in a shambles. No, we think in another dimension. We think with the mind of God. We love in the passion of God. And that gives us that unregulated walk. To share that same power and love to this world. And God, I ask that the people here, that you grasp onto it, take it out there and spread that same seed to others. Grasp on, but you've got to know him first to know who you're giving. To know what you're giving. To know the passion of what you're giving. To know the extent of what you're giving. 
Thank you, Father. We give you glory today in this name. Amen. Anybody wants prayer, like me to pray with you or anybody, I, I encourage you if you want to even now show that passion to someone. There's someone that God's been putting on your heart to pray for, to, to, to show that passion. Show that love of God.